Hey guys, good morning. I hope you're having a great day. Well, I'm out here in the garden today to get around to a few things. I want to pick another big batch of forsythia to force inside. I like to start forcing forsythia around the beginning of January. Then all through January and February, I like to switch to quince. Quince is my all time favorite branch to force. But I also need to get around to a few other things today. I need to check on my dahlias that are in storage, my ranunculus to make sure they're storing all right. And also two pieces of the fence came in today. So I wanna get them installed and see if we like the look of it. And thanks so much to whoever mentioned, I think it was Allison. Thank you, Allison, for mentioning that maybe I should just go ahead and purchase one or two panels to start and make sure I like the look of the fence. So fingers crossed, I have no clue how well it's going to hold up. It does appear that the bamboo already has a sealer on it. But if it starts to wear up, I probably will go ahead and give it another coat of sealer. I'm really not sure what to expect with this fence. I'm not sure if it will last forever. I kind of doubt it. But to be honest with you, I also doubt that we'll live here maybe past the point where my daughter graduates high school. So it's kind of a non-permanent fix to something that's kind of been a desire of my heart ever since we lived here, kind of just to create that intimate feel in the garden where I honestly just seek a lot of refuge for so many things in life. So let's start out with the forsythia. I think I need a warmer coat. I'm always saying that come this time of year and I need my snips and a bucket and we'll get to harvesting. And you know, there are so many great branches that you can force this time of year. Of course, forsythia, willow, serviceberry, quince, like I mentioned, is my favorite. Also, you know, anything that is a fruit tree, like apple, plum, cherry, pear, you can force all those things. Some of the fruit trees I find force a little bit better a little bit later, like, you know, mid-February. But even as early as January 1st, you can be forcing forsythia willow and even service berry. So it's just great fun. So do you guys have anything in particular that you like to do with your forced branches? I kind of like to just stick them all in a big jar and enjoy watching them open. But a few years ago, I made an Easter egg tree with them because the one year Easter was really early and it was still really, really cold come April 1st. But I had forced like some quince and some service berry and then I made an Easter egg tree with it. Does anyone else still make Easter egg trees? I love doing stuff like that. Anyway, let's just gather a big bunch of this. Now I have a feeling we're going to be hearing a lot of barking today because Grace is out here with me and the neighboring dogs and her are just running back and forth, back and forth all along the property. But I know she is so happy to be outside as well, even though I think the high is about 28 today, which is pretty normal here in Pennsylvania. And actually, while I'm walking by my cool flowers, oh, there she goes. Let me show you them real quickly. This is my larkspur right here. We've got some bells of Ireland. Dara, Ami Magus, Nigella, and the snaps could definitely be looking better, but I'm not really going to worry about it too much. I'll just go ahead and pinch them once the weather is warmer. And I definitely don't love the way those snaps look, but it was completely my fault to be honest with you. We dipped down to seven degrees, which for some reason was worrying me. Even though I do this every year, I still get worried when it dips down that low and I think, Oh, I better cover some of this stuff. A lot of things were bigger than they've ever been before because we just had a longer growing season this year. I mean, I don't think we had our first frost until almost Thanksgiving. It was crazy. So things were definitely a little bit bigger than what I normally like to see. So I went ahead, I covered them with frost cloth and what happened was it got down to seven. Then it immediately snowed, which you don't want that on your row covers and then it iced. So that's why a lot of my snaps got crushed but I know they're gonna be okay. I've seen this kind of thing happen before. Worst case scenario, I'll just pinch them. It'll set them back a little bit, but their root systems will still be further ahead than any new snaps that I would plant out. But you know, lesson learned, trust your instinct. I've never covered a cool flower ever before. This was the first time I've ever done that. And you know, I regret it. I should have just let the elements do what they wanna do and trust the process. But anyway, let's go ahead in and get a vase for this forsythia and check on our dahlia tubers. Here's some forsythia that I've been forcing for about a week now. 
maybe it's been about 11 days. So my hope is by the time this one is opened and it's all done, that I'll have another display, a bigger display for our dining room table. So have you guys watched Growing Florette on the Magnolia Network? Or I guess you can get it on Discovery Plus. You can get a free trial of that. There's only four episodes, so you could like get the free trial and then cancel if you wanted. But I guess it came out last year, but you know, I didn't have time to watch it because I was too busy working. Well, last week I sat down. Of course, I watched all four episodes all at once. I was so moved, so touched by every single one. There's an episode where someone comes and tells Erin how they helped her through this, you know, devastating loss that they had. You know, she's at a book signing. Also thought it was really interesting to hear that Erin was saying she was kind of a shy person and a nervous person. I would never expect that of her. And then, of course, at the end, when she's just walking through her own fields in her own, what is now her backyard of dahlias and just picking the dahlias and it's completely quiet. You know, it's maybe a full minute of complete quiet, just her, the birds, and her walking through those dahlias. That just really did it to me. I mean, I was kind of crying like a baby. My husband looked over and he's like, oh my gosh, are you okay? <laughs> but I don't know, you know, flowers, they're just powerful, right? So guys, these will be blooming in about, I would say 11 to 14 days time. It really depends on what the branch is, how long it takes. But things like forsythia, willow, even serviceberry, it's usually only about a week or two. And I just love seasonal arranging, don't you? It's just so wonderful no matter what time of year it is. I mean, there's snow and ice on the ground right now. And to be able to still have flowers from your own garden in January, I just think it's such a delight. And it gives me such a nice feeling of seasonality, you know, seasonal florals. But let me show you this amaryllis that's blooming now. I'm absolutely in love with it. So check out this one. It's called Flamenco Queen. It's kind of a white amaryllis with red streaks. The red is definitely kind of a deep maroon color with a beautiful candy apple green throat. I really love this one. So if you watched my Amaryllis video, I mentioned in there that I was gonna tell my husband to forgo Christmas presents this year because I had already purchased some more Amaryllis bulbs. Well, I wasn't just joking about that, that was the truth. And now those Amaryllis bulbs have started to bloom. So Flamenco Queen is the first one, but also Sweet Star just bloomed yesterday. Let's take a look. So here's Sweet Star. You know, I thought from the pictures that this was gonna be kind of just a flat pink color, not really a lot of streaking, but in actuality, it has just as much white as pink in it. Really, I feel like the petals are white with pink streaking. Would you agree with that? And a beautiful kind of green throat on this one as well. All right, guys. So this is my real life basement, nothing fancy down here. Here's my dahlia boxes over here. Over there, I have my ranunculus. I received those ranunculus in the fall, so I'm just holding them over till spring down here. It's unheated down here, and it does stay pretty much dark all the time. So let's open up a box and see what we're looking at. So you can see this one is Cornell. I did a video on how I store my dahlias. I store them all dirty with the soil right on them. Then in these bulb boxes, and then in open paper bags. So guys, this looks good. Feels nice and firm. Nothing mushy or moldy. Definitely don't need to add any moisture. <laughs> Grace is like, why won't you let me in there? And yeah, this one looks good. Let's take a look at another one. All right, these are all Cornell. This one looks pretty good. Oh. I'll just check the other ones and then I'll look at the ranunculus. Okay guys, I checked all those. Everybody looks fine. If they would have looked dehydrated, I would have just missed them a little bit. And if anything looked rotten, I would have immediately cut it off and put it in a new fresh bag. So now let's take a look at these ranunculus. What I'm looking for with these ranunculus, and I guess I received these, well, I received them around the same time as my daffodils because a lot of companies will ship you ranunculus in fall even if you wanna do a spring planting, and then you have to hold them over, you know, in an area like where you would hold your dahlias. But you need to make sure they're not molding or getting mushy, anything like that. That way, once you go to pre-sprout them, you won't be wasting your time, right? So these look okay so far. 
So I won't bore you looking through every single package, but here's one that looks good. Hopefully you can see that. And we'll go ahead and soak these and pre-sprout them just like I did last year. I always start the pre-soaking process on March 1st. I always check on them March 10th. And my goal is to always have them planted out by St. Patrick's Day. And I do put a row cover over them. I have an entire video taking you kind of through the whole growing season with ranunculus. But yeah, guys, these look good. So don't worry if you had to store your ranunculus like me. I just check on them about once a month just to make sure mainly what happens to me is I'll get some molding because we are so high humidity. Um, I've never really seen them get mushy or anything, although I've heard people say that bears have gotten mushy, but usually it's just mine. You know, if there's one in there that's moldy or something, I definitely want to get that out of there and throw it away so that it doesn't ruin my whole package. Yeah. These will be looking like beautiful flowers in no time. So not the most beautiful job, but an important job nevertheless. So now let's take a look at this bamboo fence. All right, I have a feeling this is gonna look really bad for the neighbors. It's just fencing. So I went ahead and just cut back any branches that might hit the fencing as I put it up, but it's actually incredibly heavy and just cumbersome the way it's made and to work around all these trees. So I'm going to wait for my husband to get home from work and then hopefully he'll help me put it up. But there's the pile of sticks that I cut. Here's just one roll of the fencing. And here's a look at the before and here's the after. So you can see through it, and right now the sun is behind me. Actually, when I stand on the other side of the fence, I really can't see in very well at all. So I'll be interested to see what this looks like in the morning because it's about two o'clock now. But you can see that's only two panels, so we have a lot more to go. And I'm really glad we decided to only get two panels first because my husband and I immediately realized that along the cattle panel fencing, we need a lot more T-posts. We actually need double the T-posts that we have in order to keep it secure. You can probably see here that basically we've just laid some logs down for extra security because our ground is frozen right now. So we can't really get any more T-posts into the ground at least easily and in the time we have this evening. But before we buy all the rest of the panels, we're gonna put in more T-posts. And really it did go up very easily. It just has zip ties. You just zip tie it to the fence. It looks great from the other side. I think that was a question. So yeah, guys, I think it's gonna be really great. It's definitely not going to be completely private, but you know, I think that's good. It'll still let some light in. It'll still let some air flow in. I think this will work and give us that feeling of enclosure. So I'm sure the next time we do a garden tour, I guess maybe February or maybe March, because February we're just covered in snow, you'll be able to see the whole thing completed. And probably in upcoming videos, we'll be starting some seeds because I start my first round of very early spring cool flowers on February 7th. So guys, I'll see you sometime soon and I hope you have a great day. Bye.